All right, people, I'm back again. Back again. Let's do this. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressors for the upright. Here it is again. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. That's two. Two, right? Let me go back to the other one. It is better to dwell in the corner of a house shop than with a brawling woman in the White House. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Whoever, whosoever, whosoever pleases a man will escape, pleases God will escape her. I don't care if she's your wife. It's better. You know, I know God hates divorce. But his, his proverbs mean exactly what they say. There's treasure to be desired and all in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. Don't save nothing. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. Proud and haughty scorner is his name. Who dealeth in proud wrath? The desire to slaughter killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. The Bible talks about this all the time. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? A, a false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom, no understanding, no counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. But safety is of the Lord. Let's keep going. 22. A good name is better. It's rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. You see, I told people this before. And I wonder where this dude got this from. He got it from here. Loving favor. What did he say? Favor rather than silver and gold. A good name rather be chosen than great riches. Riches, a good name, and favor. A good name and favor, they go hand in hand. The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Wow. You see it all the time. People run straight to the problem. But a prudent man foreseeth evil. Oh, he's a coward because he ran away. No, I'm smart. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doeth doth keep his soul shall be far from them. From who? Thorns and snares. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. It's true. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Yea, strife and reproach shall cease. Sometimes you just got to know who to get rid of. It is better to dwell in a rooftop, in a house with a contentious and angry wife, I mean, in the, in the, in the wilderness, or it's better to dwell in a rooftop with a brawling woman. If you get rid of the right people in your life, watch how things change. I don't care who they are. Mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife, children. It doesn't matter. You understand? If they of age, get rid of them. If they're causing contention and strife in your home. Or leave. You know, years ago, a police officer told me something. Some, I was staying with an establishment with some people, and it was always arguing and fighting. And the police pulled up, and they knew of the people who I was with. And the first thing they told me, why are you here? Why did you just leave? You see, a lot of times people are like, I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to fight my fight. Like you think the enemy won because you had to leave from where you were. What he said? What he just said, though? In the last one. Um, a prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself. 
it's like, you know what? I'm out of here. You understand? It's just a house. God can bless me with a new one. He can give me something new. But if I stay here, something bad is going to happen. And I'm telling you, it's exact, that's exactly what's going to happen. Something bad is going to happen if you stay around certain things. It's best to just leave. It's not that you gave up. You gave it to God. You're like, man, forget this. Then you start using the, you start seeing that materialism is not worth better than your peace. These material things can be replaced. But my peace, I need that. Cast out the scorn and contention shall go out. But if it's your house, kick them out. But you know what? That's so hard this day and age. It's hard to get people out of your house. Hint. You got to go through the car system. Even if they ain't on the lease, there's so much you got to go through. You understand? Sometimes to fix the situation, you just got to leave. And trust in the Lord. Done it multiple times. Been forced that before too. You know, I didn't like either one of them. If I'm going to leave, let it be on my own free will. You understand? And that's how I look at it. But if I keep praying to the Lord and you keep praying to the Lord, guess what he's going to do? Allow you to make the decision that's best for your life and his will. He that love of pureness of heart for the grace of his lips, the king shall be his friend. The eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge and he overthroweth the words of the transgressor. The slothful man said, if there's a lion without, I shall be slain in the streets. A slothful man make up any kind of excuse to not go to work. The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is aboard of the Lord shall fall therein. He that is aboard of the Lord shall fall. You're going to stay with him. <laughs> but if you love the Lord, he's going to remove you far from us. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I told you, no filter. It is the truth. Hmm. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Psh, psh. Spare the rod, spoil the child. That's not a good thing. Because being spoiled is not good. He that oppresses the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. I talked about this before. You got them churches out there. Give me all your money. So you give it to the rich. Hmm. Bow down thy ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart unto my knowledge. For this pleasant thing if thou keep them with thine eye, with thee, they shall with all be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee, have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge, that I might make thee to know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mayest answer the words of truth to them that sin unto thee. Rob not the poor, because he is poor, and neither oppressed the afflicted in the gate. For the Lord will plead their cause and spoil the soul of those that spoil them. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. You know, like somebody come to your house, man, I'm, I'm about to, this dude just did this, man, come on, let's ride, out, ride or die. I'm your ride or die, homie, let's go. Make no friendship with an angry man. With a furious man, thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to the soul. Be not thou one of them that strike hands of them that are surety for debts. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should they, he take away thy bed from under thee? Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean Men. Well, this just goes hand in hand with what he just said. Let's go back again, for people. Twenty-two, eighteen. I mean, seventeen. Bow down thy ear and hear the words of the wise, and apply thine heart to my knowledge. For it is pleasant thing if thou keep them with thee; they shall with all be fitted in thy lips, that thy trust may be in the Lord. I have made known to thee this day, even to thee, I have not. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsel and knowledge, that I might make thee know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mayest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee? Why you need knowledge? Just for this. To tell people things. To let people know the truth about matters. You know, 
We all seem wise in our own eyes. A lot of people got wisdom, but a lot of people's counsel is not wise. Do you understand? It's all types types of wisdom out there. You know, there's all types of things out there. Like I talk to a lot of people, a lot of people don't believe in a lot of things that's out there. The Bible speaks on. People don't believe in sorcery. People don't believe in necromancy. People don't believe in this and that. You know what I'm saying? You be I believe in everything. You know, so I know what's true. It's weird, you know. Lately, uh, like I work at this place, right? We got a new employee. A new woman started working there. And, you know, just through my past situations and things, I, my discernment is getting a little better. Glory be to God. And I, when I first met her, I was like, something is off. When I say she's a bad person, I'm like, something is off. I'm like... But the first thing came to my mind is the her characteristics and how she talked. I made a judgment call. I didn't say anything. You know, uh, I think I told one person, I was like, man, it's, I think she's wicked. I just saw it, right? But she was talking about certain things at work, sage, uh, healing, and certain things like that, right? So, you know, and so yesterday I had to take take her to on a road test to learn how to drive the truck see if she drove the truck pretty good and drop it off at the shop because it needed to be serviced so on the way back the conversation arose and she started talking about paranormal stuff and this and that and then she started talking about I'm she was first she was saying she was like my, my dad was a preacher and this and that mm, okay but it was like it's never like she was a Christian but she confessed. She was like, I'm more of Wiccan. And I know all about that. You know, but my discernment knew already. I don't know how. I know how, God. But it was like some things that knowledge, man. Knowledge is power. And it's not that I'm saying she's a bad person. Because in this world, we got to coexist with every people. Like, he's, like Paul said, avoid the evil in this world. He's like, I'm not saying he's a keep not company with them. You know what I'm saying? Keep not company with them. He's like the, the, the void to evil the world. You have to leave this planet. You have to be around all types of people. Muslims, Buddhists, whatever. But you still treat people. You show them the abomination of the Lord. I had to learn this over time. You still got to show them the same love that you would show anybody else. Because that's how those people see the truth. Because a lot of people are like, I don't like Christianity. And then, really, they don't even know it, that you're a Christian. Because you don't act like the ones that they used to. And you being different and set apart from how most Christians are is what's going to make your light shine and make them be like, hey, I had it all wrong all this time. And then you go, for there's knowledge and there's counsel, when the time comes, you're going to say what needs to be said. You understand? I knew it. I wasn't mad at her or nothing like that. But there'll come a time when I have to say something. And that's with everybody. God doesn't just tell you stuff for nothing. You understand? He doesn't. He tells you things for a reason. But you know, everything in this Bible makes sense. There's nothing in this Bible that don't make sense. You can ask anybody. I don't care what your religion is. But if you read those Proverbs, you're going to like them. I remember Matthew McConaughey said, I like certain things in the Bible, but certain things I just can't cope with. Man, if you got this much knowledge in one book, believe it all. I'm just going to be real with you. Believe it all. Don't doubt it. It's going to help you. But, you know, it's weird that the woman said her family members were, her dad was a preacher and she was raised in the church. And now all of a sudden she's more wicked. I wonder why. But I know why a lot of this happens. Because a lot of times these church leaders, and they don't teach correctly. They don't let people know the things, certain things to be careful of. Or they give up. Or they so traditional and this and that. That's why a lot of people... Run from Christianity. Horrible teachers. You know, take the uh, Crusades and the Holy War, the, how the Catholics just persecuted people and killed people because they weren't Christian. And that's after Jesus came. That wasn't the way we were supposed to do things. And they did it anyway. I don't understand. 
It's crazy how this world is. You know, that's that's fresh in people's memory. But you come out and when the Christians, the Roman Catholic. Those Catholics want power. You know what I'm saying? I want power too. Power of the Holy Ghost. I don't want that type of power. I want favor. Why? Because the word says it's better to have favor. And it's better to have a good name. Than to be rich. People think because they're rich, that makes them good. No. But being rich don't make you evil neither. You understand? There's some good rich people out there who actually do the Lord's will. He said, how hard is it for the rich to inherit the kingdom of heaven? But if you read further, he said, with the Lord, it's possible. With the Lord, it's possible. You got to have the Lord with you. But the Bible tells you so much, man. You know, I love it. I meditate on it. And like this morning, I woke up early. I'm like, I tried to sleep late. I'm like, man, I'm going to wake up late that I'm going to sleep in. I just started being bright outside. I was like, it's got to be about 8, 30, 9. 6, 30 in the morning. If the Lord want me up, he want me up. And the first thing he compelled to do, hey, clean up. Go make you some coffee. Get your phone, get your Bible. Go to the porch. And I do it. I do it every time he compelled me to do so. Most people are like, well, you should be doing this all day. Well, it's some things that don't need to be on here that I do. And God say, do not sound a trumpet like the heathen do. Like when I tell these stories, it's not to sound a trumpet. It's just to tell you what to look out for, what to do. You understand? I'm not trying to gloat about what I do. Because I do it because the Lord put it in my heart to do it. And I try to please him. So I encourage you to do the same. I tell people all the time, walking with the Lord is not like forceful thing, like it's hard to do. Your missions are not that complex. You know how many people God got working around this world? You got a destination. You got a route that he wants you to take. And he got people that he wants you to meet. And he wants you to say the things that you need to say to them in due season. Do you understand? You ain't got to go the extra mile. It's like you're trying, to, trying too hard. That's what I found, found out when I first started walking. I tried too hard. It was like I was just trying, 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 trying. But then as I got older and wiser, I started realizing it's more natural. Doing what's pleasing the Lord becomes natural to you. Because the word of God starts being grafted into your soul. You know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. Does that mean you don't get angry sometimes? Yes. You're human. He said, what man don't sin? And there's all kind of different forms of sin. But you know, he said, we'll be unfaithful if we do sin. But don't we don't abuse the right. Like, well, God forgives sin, so I'm just going to do what I want to do. No. That means what you're doing is you got wicked intentions already. You're like, I'm going to do this, and I know God's going to forgive me. So why would God forgive you? Why would he? You already know you're going to do wrong. He's like, I'm going to do it. And then after after the fact, come on, man. Wake up, people. We're living in a world right now when it's time to distance yourself from certain things, certain people, certain men, certain women. You understand? There's a lot of people that need help. And a lot of y'all are spending a lot of time chasing after the same folks, trying to save the same folks. Who God decides to move out your life, let them move on. Let them go. But I'm starting to understand some God doesn't want. I used to block people. And I just came to the conclusion this year, don't block nobody no more. Why, you may ask. Let me continue.